Hello everyone! Um, I now have all the glitches worked out, I think. I realized that I was actually broadcasting live in my Celebrate a Book page instead of here on Mary Hannah Wilson uh, homeschooling page. So I've got all that worked out now. Everything should be good. Um, we are gonna talk today about math. This is the year in review I like to do. I'm doing it a little late this year. Um, I think that's just because, well, the world kind of went crazy and I'm finally kind of getting myself together to think about how last year went and what I wanna change for the future. So last year when I did these year in review videos, I did all the subjects at once. And I think that video was almost 50 minutes because honestly, language arts takes a lot of time. So I thought this year I would break it down into subjects. And today we're gonna to specifically talk about math, which is gonna be kind of a fast one. <laughs> we have a good math groove. Um, we have settled into that routine. So, I am happy to share what we're doing and some of the other little extras that we like for math. But I'll give everyone a minute to come on in, say hi if you're here. And um, of course, if you have any questions about math, you are welcome to drop them in the comments and I will try to address them. All right, I'm gonna have a sip of my favorite drink, my iced tea from Chick-fil-A. All right. So let's get started. Um, for those of you that don't know, I was actually a math teacher, um, not high school math. I taught middle school math and elementary school math. My sweet spot is probably pre-algebra and algebra. Um, I was certified in math. So at the time I knew a lot more upper level math, but at this point I was having to review algebra two with my daughter last year because um, it's just something that I've been away from for like, two decades, <laughs> it's been a long time. So I am not the upper level math teacher, even though I was certified in math, um, it does come back quickly. So I only have one kid left in elementary school for elementary school math. And so he's actually going into sixth grade, so I won't have any next year. But this year I thought I'd share some of the stuff we do in elementary school math. And I will give you this tip too, just pick something. I know I'm probably supposed to tell you the best something to pick, but honestly, there are so many great math programs out there on the market. Um, there's always ones that I want to try that I see and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't know about this when I started or this didn't even exist, but I've just stuck with the same one because they will get the job done. In elementary school, you're building the foundation. You're giving them number sense, number manipulation. You're giving them all the strategies for all the different operations. You're throwing in some understanding of fractions and decimals, you know, part of a number, measurement, shapes. All of the curriculums are gonna hit these things. So pick one that you can live with, that your kids can live with, and that works for you. For us, years ago when my oldest, who is about to be a senior, was in elementary school, we, um, we tried actually a few, and then what we settled on was Singapore mathematics. One of the things, this is actually the textbook, and the textbook for Singapore is color. I'm trying to go to a page, they're all written all over. Um, the workbook is not color. And actually with my other kids, since I was very comfortable teaching math, I didn't actually use the textbooks much. I just looked at what the workbook was covering and I kind of taught it and then we did the practice in the workbook. The reason we liked Singapore and we picked it is the lessons were short. Um, it's not a spiraling curriculum, so it doesn't keep reviewing in the same workbook um, the things that you've done in the past. It does a little bit in the textbook. Oh, you're gonna see my son, like this is what he does on his book. <laughs> this is why I'm not holding up all the pictures. It does do some review a little bit in the textbook, the built-in review, but my kids just really did well with the short lessons in Singapore. So that's why we stuck with it. It's not to say it's the best elementary school math out there on the market. It was just the one that I picked. And again, I think they all get the job done. Um, so I stuck with it. I don't love, my oldest I did change I think in second grade and that's when we found Singapore and we stuck with it. 
I, I think you, you probably do your kids a disservice changing math too many times in elementary school, um, but it does happen. Like I said, we changed. I think we tried three programs before we settled on Singapore in elementary school. Um, now, because my youngest is the last, you know, he's the fourth child, he's the last one in line, he's only been using the textbooks. I never let any other kid write in the textbook because it was color and it was pretty. Um, but now he's number four, so I didn't want to spend the money on the workbooks, so we're actually only using the textbooks. Because I'm like, well, now I own all these textbooks. Um, we'll just use these instead. So he's doing a little differently because he is only using the textbook. So there's what like a little review looks like. And he is finishing that up. Be careful with the numbers on Singapore. 4B is actually the start of fifth grade, and 5A is the end of fifth grade. It's a little confusing. But um, again, we never worry about that. You can see that he's not quite done this book and we stopped for the year. So we'll just pick this up in August and we'll just keep going. Timelines, um, grade levels. At this point, I've been homeschooling for over a decade. Like, it really doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I'm not worried about finishing the book at the end of the year because you have to start the next book in the next, like that doesn't matter. We're on a continuum and we are always learning and we're gonna address your needs as we go along. So I don't really care what the number on the book says. We're gonna just keep going. Um, we'll talk more about pre-algebra in a minute and that's probably what I'll put my child in somewhere in sixth grade and I'll let you know how I decide that. Okay, other things for elementary school. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them. Hello, my Uncle Jimmy is watching. Hi, Uncle Jimmy. Okay, another thing that we have used over the years, these are math fact sheets. They are from a series of workbooks called One Minute Math. And I mainly focused on the multiplication ones. There is a affiliate link to Amazon in the description of this video that'll show you them. And what I did is I just printed them all and made copies and um, my kids never really liked the whole timing of the one minute. If you have like a competitive kid who really likes that with himself, you could do that. We never timed it. And in fact, after my oldest didn't mind writing, but then my second and third were so kind of anti the writing and their hands got tired that we just did them orally. So my fourth got the benefit of that. And um, basically every day but when we went to start math, this was our warm up. So I would just start at the first problem and I would point and we go along the way and he would say the answers. So it was kind of like flashcards. The nice thing about the one minute math is it's like incremental. So this five by five, five times five sheet, 50% of these problems are five times five. And then I think it's like, or maybe it's 40% and then 25 or 30% are the one you just learned five times four and then the last amount are all mixed from before. So you're really hitting the new fact hard and the one just before it, and then scattering in some review. And then we would move on. Once I thought he kind of had that down, we move on to the next one and we just keep going. So those are linked in there. They're called One Minute Math. Another fun thing, and this, oh, I also linked to a website. If you don't want to buy a workbook and you just want something free and your kids like the computer anyway, there's a completely free math facts website called extra math and it's systematic so it starts your kids like it gives them a placement test and it shows them on a graph which facts they've memorized and which ones they haven't um, it gives them a green light yellow light is the ones they're kind of getting close to and they try to fill in the graph with green and it's like a systematic way to do it like online free flashcards so same thing I know in elementary school hitting those math facts is a big deal um, we try not to stress over it, but to spend a, you know, a little warm up each day doing it. Extra math is another great way to do it. You can just tell all your kids, get on the computer and do their extra math. Okay, and the other thing we started in elementary school and you can continue to use through high school if your kids like it is the, are these books. And there is an affiliate link to Amazon for these also. I think they're by the Critical Thinking Company. They are. You can probably find them wherever you get your homeschool supplies. Um, my kids like to dabble in these. It's not something I really assign. Every now and then I'll say, hey, why don't you pull out your math vendors? Let's do one today. But they go up, I think, into high school. So this one's grade three to six. I think they have them for seventh through 12th, and they have younger ones. And they're just logic puzzles, if you've seen them like these. You know, just, just thinking, thinking about the process of elimination, thinking about facts, and 
um, reasoning and that kind of thing. So that's another thing. Um, that's basically it for us for elementary school math. And then we've moved into upper level math, pre-algebra and beyond. So we actually, I know I said not to try jumping around maths a lot, but we tried three different upper level math curriculums before we settled on the one we use, which is Mr. D. It is an online math. He does the teaching, much like I'm doing here. It's a video lesson. And then all your solutions are there and um, you can do the, all the grading is done online and everything. And we have just been very happy with that. We tried two other math programs before that. And for various reasons, they just didn't work out for us. Um, and we're really happy with Mr. D. So I'm gonna show you actually his program in a moment. But first, one of the questions I get a lot is how do you know when to put your kid in pre-algebra? Um, I actually talked to Mr. D on the phone about this when I was trying to decide what to do with my son when he was in seventh grade. And Mr. D's answer was, if they have a good grasp of multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division, the four main operations, then they could go into pre-algebra. I mean, obviously, no, your third grader, you think you have, they have a good grasp, but you need to wait a little while. <laughs> but in middle school, you know, once you've exposed them to fractions and decimals and um, all of the different operations, maybe a little bit of order of operations, that kind of thing, when they have a solid grasp, you can put them in. So I tend to put them in somewhere in sixth grade, but that is also because I'm a math teacher. So we took, I think my, my son took a year and a half maybe to do pre-algebra because anytime he needed to slow down, I would supplement for him. And we would just stop at a topic and I would find something else to supplement. Like the um, books, the fraction decimal books, what are they, how to do fractions? And there's like three or four books of them. I don't have one handy. Um, so I would just supplement and we just moved at his pace through pre-algebra. So he now is partway through algebra and just showing you again, we stopped at chapter three at the end of our school year. This is Mr. D, we print it all out. And he'll just pick up when we kick off in August. Again, another example like, he didn't have to finish at the end of the year. We can just pick up where he left off and he can continue to move through his pace. Algebra can go in a high school transcript, whether you do it in seventh grade or eighth grade or ninth grade. Um, you can put it on your high school transcript. So you can denote that different ways if you want to show it was done in middle school, but you don't have to. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, now this is gonna get a little tricky because I can't share, sorry, I'm like leaning into you all. I can't share my screen on Facebook Live. So I'm going to, this is on my iPad, I'm gonna flip my iPad and lower the tripod so that you can look at my Mr. D um, access online. So I'm logged in right now as my son, David, and I'm going to show you how the math class works. Cause I know a lot of people, you know, that helps to visually see how everything's laid out for these online classes. So this is going to get a little tricky because I have to lower the tripod and then flip, but I kind of practiced and I think I know what I'm doing. Ah, oh, pretty good. Okay. So here we are in a Mr. D math class. This is algebra one, and this is just your main screen. You can see I'm logged in as David up here. Okay, so here's where you can just go to your main lessons, and this has all of the lessons in Mr. D math. I'm sorry, it keeps like trying to focus funny. Maybe if I back up a little bit. Okay. This is what I love that he added last year. This is you can print the coursework by chapter. So instead of, we used to have to go into each chapter and print it individually, but now if you head in here, of course you have your recommended calculators and this is your pacing guide so you know where to be all year long if you wanna make sure to finish at the end of the year. And then you can click on here and all of the worksheets for the chapter will come up. There is no textbook for Mr. D. So he wrote this curriculum, so you have to print out the worksheets. And I'll show you how we keep ours. So let's go back to the lessons, and I'll show you how it is. All right, let's head down here to like polynomial functions. 
I was playing in this earlier. Okay, so what happens is this is where you could print the coursework if you haven't already printed it, but I like to do the whole, I actually usually do three or four chapters at a time. Sometimes there's extra practice in case your kid needs a little more extra practice. And then of course there's the solutions so they can check themselves. The video is always right here and Mr. D teaches a lesson. Here's some examples. So, an example. so sometimes it slides like it is here, but let's see if I can get up to his, yeah. And sometimes he's writing on the board, kind of like you would be watching a teacher teach math um, in a classroom. So he writes on the board like that. After you're done the lesson, if you want to keep track of grades, the first grade is for your lesson. It's actually just for your, I'll call it classwork. So you pick where you do classwork. If my kids complete the classwork, they can put a 98. That's how I feel about that. So I'll go ahead and it's a completion grade for me. It's not a correct grade for me. You can decide how you want to do it. It's called, okay. And then the next thing is the quiz. Sorry, I gotta look, here's the quiz. So I put in a grade here, so there's a check mark. Now at the end of each section, if they wish, there is a five question quiz. See, max score here is five. And it's kind of a way to make sure you understand before you move on. And then at the end of the chapter, down here, oh look, you can do honors. So if you wanna do algebra honors, you can do a section for some honors credit. And then here's the test. So the test for chapter seven is a 25 question test, you can see over here. And then I think they're allowed to take it three times. So you can take it if you need more, you can continue and try again. I usually just go over the wrong answers with them because it'll show them each one they got wrong and I usually just go over it. I was trying to show you, there is spiral, here's a spiral review, and there is a final exam. There's a semester two exam down here and there was a semester one exam. I don't know, here it is, it was right before chapter seven. So that's like a, cum a cumulative test over time and all the grades are recorded there. All right, now I'm going to try to flip this back. It's always dangerous because you know, Facebook Live is gonna like screenshot this for everyone and put it as the cover of the video right when I'm like doing this and I look really weird, whatever. I guess that's the day and age we live in. We're all just used to looking weird on video. Okay, so that works. I print out several chapters at a time and just keep it in here. Um, I've always liked Mr. D because there's lots of good word problems all throughout algebra, pre-algebra, algebra two. Um, and my daughter who did algebra two was definitely prepared for the SAT. She actually did Mr. D's SAT prep and her score significantly increased from the first time she took it. So that was great. I have felt very confident in this program it's worked really well for very different children in my house. So I will have three in Mr. D at some point this year, because my youngest at some point will go ahead up into pre-algebra. Um, my oldest will actually be taking math at the community college. So she's done, she finished algebra two. Mr. D does have courses after that. So you can go into pre-calc, but she went ahead and is going to do that at the community college. So my other daughter will be in geometry. David will finish algebra and then at some point pop into geometry and Daniel will enter pre-algebra at some point. So at this point, we've done every Mr. D math class from pre-algebra to algebra two for someone in the house and we're sticking with it. Um, so again, there's lots of great math curriculums out there. Find the one that works for your kid, for your family and just kind of stick with it. I have heard, and this was something I asked Mr. D about, uh, some people were asking me why not do Algebra 1, then Algebra 2, and then Geometry, and Mr. D felt, at least in his program, and that a solid Geometry program is actually a great way to reinforce Algebra 1, and I did see that as true. So a good Geometry course will require the use of what you learned in Algebra 1, so it gives you another year to reinforce those skills before you move on to Algebra 2. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so I think that's everything on math. Oh, 
In the description of this video, I reached out to Mr. D because his fall registration is open right now and there's a coupon code you can use. I think it's all capital letters, blog 10. So if you want to register, he has both live and self-paced classes. We have always done self-paced because like I said, my kids are kind of all over the board on where they are in the school year. Um, I think only Patricia actually finished her math and is ready to like go to the next one. So she could do a live class if she wanted. My daughter did the SAT class live and it was a lot of fun. She really enjoyed it. Mr. D was a lot of fun. Um, he's quite funny, <laughs> which you don't get the same sense of in the pre-recorded videos. Even in the live class, they record the videos. So if you're not there live, you can watch the class video later. But the live was a really great experience. A lot of my um, blog readers have said they love the live. Again, we've continued to do the self-paced and that's worked really nicely for us. But I wanted to mention that that's out there and that fall registration has started. So for math this year, it went really well. Um, and we're gonna just continue on. <laughs> If you're watching a replay of this later, please feel free to leave a comment and um, I will answer it for you. All right, guys, thanks for being here. Tomorrow, we're tackling the big one. We're tackling language arts, which is, you know, vocabulary and grammar and reading and writing. And I have lots of different levels here, so it's going to be a little bit longer. But come on back tomorrow at 2 and we'll go ahead and tackle that. All right, bye.